Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to say, here I am, back again. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's one of those things. Uh, what we have to say we feel is really important. So um, I will try to give you a history of our church and our goals and what it is we're trying to do now. And I'm speaking as a representative of the, both the Stewardship Committee and the Ad Hoc um, Property Expansion Committee for the church. Um, I'm here this morning to talk about our concerns and plans for the future of the church. <coughs> you know me. I've been around this old church ever since 1967, and I'm still here. <laughs> and why? I mean, you know, look around. <laughs> I love this church. I really do. Wherever it's located and the people in it. It's a community with a mission. It's a body with many parts. Over the years, one thing has remained constant. We have always tried to look ahead and plan for what the church might be in future years. <coughs> Back in 1967, the old downtown Stone Church faced real problems. So, it was sold. And we joined with the ENR Church, I believe, on this property, which was well out of the downtown area and on a much larger piece of land. About 15, 20 years later, we decided to renovate. And... Uh, Things aren't in sequence here, but we added the bond wing and then extra rooms down the hall, kitchen. And about the same time, within a couple years, realized that purchasing the house next door on Dixie Trail would give us extra parking room and also a place for a lovely church office and meeting building uh, right, you know, on the same property as part of our church. Now, fast forward to about 20 years from, uh, fast forward about 20 years to the present. Our congregation has been growing slowly, and in the meantime, of course, the city has also been growing and changing. Huge apartment and condo buildings are creeping down Wade Avenue. And at this point, let me remind you of an old children's story, The Little House by Virginia Burton the one with the really wonderful pictures. This is a story in which a well-constructed home was built in the country and was built for the owners, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. And it was slowly swallowed by the encroaching city. Now, I'm not equating that story, of course, with our situation exactly, but I do want to suggest that you picture this church property being surrounded on all sides by apartment or condo development. <clears throat> we would then have no room to grow except upward or moving to another property. The message I'm trying to get across is that we are no longer the church of even 20 years ago. We have many more activities and services going on throughout the year. If we want to allow for future growth, we arguably will benefit by additional property. For the first time in 40 years, the houses right next to our church property have finally come up for sale. The congregation gave us a go-ahead at the November congregational meeting to pursue a purchase of the adjacent Wade Avenue property, which had been on the market actually for several months. However, after inspection and financial analysis of its ability to produce rental income, the three houses on Wade Avenue, which is, you know, right behind you there, were deemed too problematic to pursue. We dropped the offer to buy in January and only put in a bid then on the house that was nearest to the church. And this offer was never accepted. So that was dead. Now, at about the same time, we were told that the adjoining property to the Pilgrim House on Dixie Trail, this little white house over here, was also
also going on the market. And we thought, aha, you know, uh, God is speaking. Amen. Um, all of that property over there was contigu contiguous with the back of our current church lot and the, the lot line. We have pictures of it. We'll show you later um, in the letter. Um, run very deep and uh, then um, run along the back of the parking lot. Uh, turned out the house, the little white house, was actually connected in a sort of an odd T-shaped lot or an L-shaped lot, however you look at it, uh, to the very first apartment house, which is on O'Berry Street. So in other words, it's a, a dog leg. And the only part of the property that we was not up for sale was a separate house right on the corner. Uh, the buildings looked in good shape, seemed, um, pro you know, promising. It is rental property, which is currently bringing in income, and we like that. <laughs> this addition would basically give us control then of the use of the end of this block. Our ad hoc committee immediately placed an offer, and this was accepted. Now, the contract that we signed agreed upon a due diligence period of about a month till April 4th to inspect the property. And in this, we also agreed to close by the first week, by about the first week in May. And what this means is that um, the non-refundable $25,000 of earnest money would be paid by April 4th. The remaining cost of the $575,000 for the whole lot, 0.8 some acres, would be paid a month later, the first week in May. This payment was approved by representatives of the Church Council, Stewardship, Property Ministry, and this Ad Hope Property Group, which met this past March 5th. This is the reason we need to have our financial package in place by the middle of April. This is what we want the congregation to be aware of up front. You can see that timing is critical for this purchase. A straw vote was taken at the January congregational meeting, and it indicated that those present were willing to give a combination of gifts and loans equal to about $175,000. And that was just a little five-minute vote. <laughs> so we are very hopeful that we will be able to reach our goals. Uh, we need you now, all, all of you, please, to examine your finances carefully and prayerfully and think about what you want your legacy to this church to be. We think that the church can get a bank loan for part of the purchase price, but not the whole thing. We would appreciate our people to provide the basic financing in the form of gifts and loans, hopefully to reach about two hundred to $250,000, so that we don't have to take on a huge loan to meet the full purchase price. The more we give, the less we have to borrow. And this proposal is an exceptional opportunity for our church and uh, probably won't come more than once. This week you will receive a letter explaining this effort in more detail and explaining how your gift, large or small, will serve to put a firm foundation on the financial outreach of this church. People have said that buying this property is one of the smartest things a church can do to retain its flexibility. Please read the mailing. It will also, uh, this proposal will also be on our Friday church emails, our website, and the newsletter. And then you decide, um, hopefully, that you will do what you can. We truly want to do this to provide um, multiple possibilities for our future in this church.
you have questions, and I'm sure you will, uh, please call me or any member of our ad hoc property committee uh, for council. Thank you very, very much.